Hey, it's Michael Saul, but everybody calls me Tiny. This video is turned around at resistance plus a stock to watch this week. This is stock market analysis for the week of June 18, 2018. If you would like intraweek updates from me, go to www.attackthemarkets.com. Put in your first name, your best email address, follow the instructions, make sure you confirm that it was you that put in your information and not some evil bot traveling across the interwebs, signing up to all these forms. If you would like to join the Facebook group, it is www.facebook.com slash groups slash attack the markets. Answer three simple questions, just promising you're not going to be a jerk to other members, and you will gain access. Both of those are free. To never miss a video, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell for notifications. Also, if you like what you're hearing, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. All right, there we go. All out of the way. So let's take a look at what happened with the market this week. Happy Father's Day, by the way. I'm doing this really early on Sunday morning because I would like to spend Father's Day with my boys. Uh, but now I'm probably going to sleep late and then from there. All right, so the market went up, the, the S&P rather, went up to the 78.6% retracement of this swing down, churned there for a couple of sessions, and then pulled back on Friday. Did form a hammer Friday at the 20 EMA. Nothing has changed as far as my opinion goes. I believe we will break through this and go to new all-time highs in the S&P 500 and in the Dow. Already there with the Russell, and Russell didn't have a pullback day on Friday. Went sideways. Already there with the mid-caps. Mid-caps did pull back but did hit a high um, during the week before that. And the NASDAQ, the rock star, just continuing to move higher. Okay, so those have already hit the highs. I believe they will see higher prices as the S&P 500 and Dow continue to march higher. Once the new high is made, is that all she wrote? Well, probably not just at a new high, but I think we're getting close to an area where we could see a deeper pullback than what we have seen in the last few weeks. I mean, this was a kind of nice size pullback back in February. We could see something like that or even something uh, deeper than that. But I, I believe we got a little bit to go until that occurs. Could we not hit, or well, of course we could always not hit new highs on the S&P and Dow, but I'm talking as far as a count is concerned. Yeah, we could have truncated fifth waves uh, that's Elliot talk, and I don't even know if I'm saying it correctly because I'm not really an Elliot wave expert. Don't claim to be, uh, and we may not, we may fall short, and we may not hit all-time highs. But I just don't see a reason why we're not going to. Okay, uh, climbing the wall of worry with the trade wars, uh, the denuclearization of North Korea, maybe or nothing firm. Or, uh, okay, whatever it is, it's just. All these crosswinds are hitting, and it's just not affecting the market. Where else are people going to put their money? Bonds are starting to perk up a little bit, but even then, you know, they just you're not going to get the return. At least this is the perceived argument. You're not going to get the return that you're going to get in the stock market. That's what people are thinking. All right, so uh, and let's look at some sectors. Semiconductors are coiled up here. And if they break, and the Nasdaq's still at new highs despite the semiconductors lagging a little bit. Let's see, we got the coil right here. Here's KLA Tanker. Yeah, not leading anymore. NVIDIA, though, still acting well. Here's Intel. Here's MU. Uh, sitting right on its uh, 20 EMA here. Is ADI uh, consolidating right up here? That's acting well. What about the banks? So, yeah, the banks continue to test the 200 day moving average. Um, could they break through? Yeah, I mean, once we get a, a lot of test on it, it's like a, a drill hitting the ground. So perhaps it could uh, bust through. But again, I mean, I don't see any real reason for that to happen just just uh, yet as far as a news or geopolitical reason or even a domestic rather than going geopolitical right or I, I, don't, I don't know if that's even the right word but anyway there is a gap down here at 101.80 Bank of America right on its 200 day moving average see if that holds or if 
that is going to pendulum through, right? So went up one way. Now is it going to go back down the other way? But you got to watch that 200-day moving average. Here's J.P. Morgan. Here's Citigroup, really underperforming, not acting that well. Uh, here's Northern Trust. We can pull out the trend lines. <coughs> Excuse me. And we could uh, put in a triangle-like, coil-like um, pattern here. Here's Zion. And here is Goldman, who's not really a bank, but sure acts like one. And Goldman's hanging around this line, which uh, has been drawn in for a little bit. It's a support. This is not kind of head and shouldery, right? You got the left, you got the double head, and then you got the right. But overall, it's just you know kind of sitting here at some support. If you look at the broker dealer, they were coiled up. And uh, let's see what you got here, right? So it coils up a little bit. You just have to readjust the lines. Look like an interactive brokers. Was acting strong. Now it's, you know, not, I mean, it's between the 50 and the 200, so you can't really call it much. Uh, it's going to be more like a little ping pong. Biotechs continue to move higher here. Stocks like Amgen, ENDP talked about that's continuing to move higher uh, biogen it's right on its 200 day moving average and uh, Gilead it's pulling back here holding the 20 EMA and the 50 day simple moving average Amazon continuing to move higher Apple pulling back here but doesn't look like a short right now something to watch Netflix just a total monster broke out from that triangle in the 320s and just zoomed up headed up to the 400 handle how about Tesla wow what a move so I would wait for a pause or a pullback here and I still don't know if Tesla is out of harm's way or not um, the Zuck book yeah continuing to move higher Alphabet looks like it wants to test the highs Caterpillar still sloppy John Deere also the same, but did have this hammer at the 200 and the 50. Stock like Disney. Full disclosure, my kids own this, and no, I don't have any sell orders in for their shares and all that. They were given it as presents from uh, friends and family. So, um, still sketching out whatever this is, but it has a nice couple of days last week. I was happy to see that, of course. Okay, um, so that's Disney. What else can we look at? How about Visa and MasterCard? So Visa is in a little coil right up here, right under the highs. MasterCard, similar. So those are two to watch. But boy, I mean, look at these moves. Just really nice, solid moves here in these. Okay, is it because people are just spending like crazy? Yeah, that could be the reason. All right, uh, bonds, still sloppy. So I'm not, I don't want to make a call on it here. Let it coil up. Uh, let's go back real quick. Sorry, I went, I went to oil too quick. Could be forming an inverted head and shoulders. Somebody asked me, but it's, it's still got to form that right shoulder. Now we look at oil. Yeah, oil got cracked on Friday. If it loses this 13 level, could get a retest back down at the 1250 or the 200-day moving average. Gold, yeah. Just not acting well. Here's gold miners um, as well. They're not really acting as bad as uh, as GLD, but they're not acting good either. So, the recap. We turned at the 78.6% retracement, but I think it's only going to be temporary. doesn't mean we zoom right past it this week. We could go down a little bit further. It's, I just... I don't think that this is going to hold forever. I do not think this is the high. Possible truncated fifth wave, but I, re I doubt it. It does not appear to be. And if you want to do the count, right, you got one up, two down. Could this be one, two, three of three? And you do a little ABC down, and then I don't know. I'm not an Elliott Wave guy, so I, I am. I respect it. I just, I'm not an expert on it, but I think we're going higher, okay, however that <laughs> turns out, um, whether we go lower first or whether we bust on through, 
but if we do break the 78.6 I am looking for these highs to be tested I also think the Dow will hit new highs um, the Russell mid caps and the Q's are already there stock to watch this week is super value Inc it's actually a grocery store so super value had a base it broke it's now pulling back yeah, maybe it wants to go down a little bit more to the 20, maybe a little more, but you, you got to watch it as a pullback, okay? So how you trade a pullback is you draw in your line. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's not art school, okay? And then you look for the high of the low day in the pullback to be taken out, and that's what you can use as a potential entry. Could it go right from here? Yeah, but I'd like it better if it leaned against a key moving average such as the 20. Questions? Email me at tiny at attackthemarkets.com. Don't forget to give me a like and leave a comment and subscribe if you would like to receive these videos. That's it. Any questions, email me. I will talk to you in the intraweek updates or in next week's video.